say amen. 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 And amen again. Amen. amen. Sabbath evening's blessing to everyone. Yes. Now sometimes we often take things for granted. But this is one thing that I have learned over the years. Amen. And that is to value people. I have learned in my life to value and love people genuinely. Amen. Amen. And so this evening, I wanted to know, for those who know me well, will tell you that I tell it as it is. Amen. And I want you to know this evening that I appreciate and value your commitment and dedication. Amen. Want to thank the choir sincerely because you know that it takes sacrifice not only to rehearse and to come and sing for God, but I believe that the choir fully recognizes the pivotal role that they have to play in the utilization of their gifts Amen. to make sure that God's children can come and hear the saving knowledge of Jesus Amen. that they can make a decision to go with him all the way. Amen. And so choir, I thank you very much for you coming night after night and singing for us so ably. We pray that God will continue to bless your voices, that you will continue to do well for him. Then I'm not unmindful that the organist is also a key person to provide the accompaniment yes. to ensure that you stay on notes Amen. and that you sing to the honor and glory of God. Yes. So my organist, I thank you very much for your commitment each night. Put your hands together for him. And I thank also Sister Scott for singing ably for the Lord. That's one of my favorite songs. Because we serve an untimed God. What do you say? Amen. Amen. And for all of our members, the ushers, the prayer warriors, the members of the hospitality team, the greeters and the recorders of information, those at the technical helm, to ensure that my voice is projected and amplified. I want you to thank you very much. So one of these nights, you have to come out front and stand with me so I can see you. Because I don't know exactly who is inside, but I can tell you they're doing a wonderful job. What do you say? And for all the members of the team for your tremendous work. And for those who in my name in corner, the hallelujah corner, and those who invite the folk to come from night after night, we thank you. I was looking all over for Sister Toussaint, but I saw her walking in. Yes, it's good to see you. And um, I can tell you, she, along with all the other members, she is bringing out her friends and her visitors. Amen. 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 You see, my brothers, let me tell you something. We need to value the work that each person does. Because they can do it like I can't do it. There are some people when you come to church, they, as it were, bring sunshine to your life because they just keep smiling. And if that is your ministry, smile. Because when you come here sometimes, we've had a rough day, but your smile can turn things around. Amen? So we value one another. 
And this is how we want to do it. Because in heaven, we are not going to have compartments in heaven. So, in heaven, we will be one big family. So you got to learn to love me now. Because you're going to see me in heaven. And nobody is going to take my place. Pinch yourself and say, nobody is not going to take my place. There's a special place in heaven for all of us. And I'm not going to allow anyone or anything to rob me of my place. For the song says, there's a new name written down in heaven. And it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. Yes, a new name. And I can't wait to be there. So I'm doing my little part to ensure that everybody makes it in. Say amen. Amen, amen. amen, amen. So, this week is going to be a big week. I can't believe that one week is finished already. Oh my God, time is going by quickly. But we are going to do what we have to do. So this coming week, starting on Sabbath, we are going to be having a big week. You can't afford to miss any of the sermons. You have to be here. And not only that, next Sabbath, it's going to be the victory day. It's going to be a celebration day. It's going to be a hallelujah day. For the Bible says there is rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that repents. But I want to tell you that God's children are signing up for the Christian Jubilee. I get excited because we are going home. We are going home. What a day it's going to be. When we're going to look back in time and say, I thank God for the mission of Mercy Crusade. I thank God for those who prayed. I thank God for those who sung because I was going through some stuff. I was at the verge of giving up and giving in. But somehow God brought me and I heard the message. I surrendered to Jesus. Look at me now. What a God we serve. So you can't afford to miss any of the sermons. And you have to get your family members ready because this may just be the last campaign. We can't play with our salvation. Can I tell you? There is a young, there's a gentleman that we were supposed to baptize this Sabbath. And the person died. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Sometimes we take life for granted. He said he wanted to do it on Sabbath. We should have gone there Wednesday and the man died. It pains my heart. But God knows all things. So come tomorrow morning. The topic will be come down from your limb. Come down from your limb. At 11, hope in death's valley. Hope in death's valley. And on, at 7 p.m., he touched me. Amen. But tonight is the only night that we have that is guaranteed. Amen. And the topic is the gospel of a second chance. Amen. The gospel of a second chance. Our heads are bowed and our eyes closed. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Even now, you have already begun your work in the lives of your people. Your Holy Spirit has been working in the minds of your people. They are making their decisions for you. Many have had a rough week, but through it all, they have seen your divine leading. 
We ask you now that you will come by here in a mighty way. Manifest your power in our midst. Take your man servant and make me pliable be in your hands. Hide me behind the cross and may your name be lifted high. Empower me tonight so that the words will go forth clearly. Remove all distractions and so at the end of the service, may your children surrender to you. Surrender to Jesus who to know is life eternal. Thank you for hearing and for answering as we leave all things in your hands, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 My children, come Sabbath morning, I will have your gifts for you. But let me proceed this evening. As we look on this topic, the gospel of a second chance. Erwin Kaufman is credited to be the first person to use this saying do it right the first time do it right the first time but this evening i want to refute such claim because my Bible tells me in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31 that God, the creator of the universe, after six days of creation, God looked at all that he created and he declared that it was very good. Amen. God did it right the first time. Amen. God yes. did it the first time right. The Bible says that God saw everything Amen. that he had made. And behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And I say amen. amen. God was satisfied having looked over all that he created. His crowning act when he looked on man, he was satisfied. One pulse of harmony beat through the entire universe. Everyone was happy and alive. The trees were rejoicing. The birds were chirping. Man was happy because God provided a companion for him. The Bible says God looked over his creation and he declared it was very good. But by the time we reach Chapter 3, his voice was pregnant with sorrow because man had sinned. The Bible, my brothers and sisters, attributes the origin of all that is evil in the world to an act of human disobedience, a willful departure from God's express intentions for human life. God told Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden that of all the trees in the garden, you may freely eat, but the day that you touch or take of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, 
you shall surely die. They had the luxury of enjoying everything that God made. They had the grand privilege of communicating face to face with the God of heaven. Amen. Nothing was withheld from them other than God said, obey me and live, Amen. disobey and die. Amen. In the words of the Apostle Paul, Romans 5, and verse 12, the Bible says that sin came into the world through one man. One man's disobedience has caused the entire world to be plunged into sin. One man, because of his disobedience, has robbed the entire universe of that life-giving, sustaining power of God. Amen. As a result of one man's disobedience, today we are fighting against one another. We hate each other. We destroy each other. We lie on each other. We take advantage of each other, all because of one man's disobedience. My brothers and my sisters, this has important implications for the human predicament. It indicates that our fundamental problem stems not from what we are, but from something we have done. God made us upright. God made us to live a perfect and upright life. But because of one man's act, we are now suffering the consequences that we have in our world. Amen. Our basic problem as human beings is our lack of harmony with God. Our unwillingness to accept his sovereign rule over our lives. We want to be gods of our own lives. We want to live and operate as if we owe our own life in our own existence in our own hands. But can I tell you, my friends, we are here tonight because of the sustaining power of God. Amen. All of us, bar none, should have died because we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. You see, you see, my brothers and sisters, sin is an interruption of God's design, Amen. a departure from his plan for the world. Sin is a rupture in our relationship with God and other human beings, causing unbelief and pride, disobedience, rebellion, ingratitude, and injustice. And if any of these characteristics we can identify with, it simply means that we are affected and infected by sin. Amen. Amen. Sin is a disease. Can I talk to the church tonight? I said sin is a disease. It is worse than cancer. It is worse than AIDS. Sin is destructive, but sometimes we hug up sin because we don't die same time. But God is a merciful God. Sin is a disease. It spreads antagonism and hostility throughout our existence. So if we are malicing people, sin is having dominion over us. 
if we are hating one another, sin is having a sway in our lives. And God wants to deliver us. God wants to set us free. God sent his son not only for him to come and die, but that we can use the liberating power of Jesus to live above sin. Sin sets us against God, Amen. against each other, against our environment, and ultimately against ourselves. Amen. Sin distorts every aspect of human life. It generates corruption, degeneration everywhere. There is nothing that sin touches that remains the same. It leaves nothing as strong and healthy as it should be. No wonder Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 says that sin pays wages. Lord of mercy. Sin pays wages. My brothers and my sisters, we don't have to allow this kind of life to damage us. We can live a victorious life in Jesus. Amen. But tonight, you may be paralyzed by sin. Amen. You may have been affected. Your relationships have been going away because people can't allow themselves to be submissive and be willing to work together. Sometimes we are distance apart though we are living in the same house. And modern technology has helped to make it even worse. So one is in the room and you have to be texting or WhatsApp. Dinner is ready. Husband and wife in welcome, Pastor Peter. Husband and wife in bed, and before you put on the phone and turn to each other and talk about the transactions of the day and how God has kept you, you take sin. This technology is affecting our human relationship. We are more alienated now from each other living in the same house. Am I talking truth? Yes, Don't get quiet on me. Yes, but tonight, I have good news. Yes, Behold, I bring you glad tidings of great joy. Amen. I am here tonight to present a gospel. Not only a gospel, but I'm here to present the gospel. For though we are affected and infected by sin, God provides the remedy. God has given the solution. So I'm here tonight to present the only remedy for sin, and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel is our second chance. Oh, hallelujah. Where would have you be? had it not been for the gospel. Where would you be had it not been for the gospel? You know, my brothers and sisters, we need to celebrate the gospel tonight. For had it not been for the gospel, many of us would have died already. Some of us would even have any recognition because we used to live some wretched lives. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But tonight, I stand here to know and to tell somebody that every saint had a past. And every sinner has a future. You didn't hear what I said? I said every saint has a past. And every sinner has a future. But together we can make it. For it doesn't matter what your past may have been. You need to tell them you don't live there anymore. The past is a place of reference and not a place of residence. I don't live there anymore. My story changed. The day I met Jesus. 
somebody tonight must receive the gospel and be changed. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. You see, every child is born into this world a wonderful miracle. Amen. You know, I tell you, I remember when my wife got pregnant. I told her that I needed a son. <laughs> now, stay with me. I have to make a confession. <laughs> so, my wife is from a large family, pastoral family. So, I said to her, I want one child. My wife said, no. I was thinking of five. I said, my wife, I don't know the context in which you were brought up, but I saw the struggle of mama because my father allowed himself to be influenced by his friends and left mama and marry another woman in order to get to the United States of America. So being the eldest son there with mama, I had to help her, she was a dressmaker, to take care of my siblings. So that is why I learned to do everything because mama says, Godfrey, that's my pet name. You have to learn to do these things. So while mama is sewing, I had to be taking care of my siblings. Now mark you, you are fortunate now to have diapers. We did not know diapers and nappy. And what my mother used to make nappy is that she cut the flower bags. That white flower used to come in. And she would cut it. Yes. Wash it with brown soap, lather it, put it out in the sun, and then rinse it, and put it out, then iron it. Then you used to have some one penny pins with a big head and the, oh. So you have to be careful how you put the pin through the nappy so you don't stick the baby. But you have to learn all of those things. You have to wash, cook, and everything clean the place. That time, log wood, dye, coconut brush. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about tonight. Tell me where it goes. I have to tell you something. I know where I'm going. So you have to get the tilly lamp and heat it with the wax. Put it on the brush and go down on our knees, shine the floor, so that when she walked, you could see her face. So, I said to myself, my president, I said to myself, I just want one. Because it's not easy. Hard stuff. Not easy to take care of so many children. Amen. Amen. So my wife said, uh -uh. I want five. So we said, okay, let's make a compromise. She says, three. I said, my wife, all right. You said three? <laughs> because I said my wife remember that the Lord says 
The man is the head of the household. I said, my wife, remember during courtship, I said, we have 100%. 49% is yours. 49 is mine. And 2% is on the shelf. So if we can come to a decision with your 49 and my 49, the 2% on the shelf is mine. <laughs> no, I'm confessing. That's my story. So, she says, okay. So I use the 2% on the shelf. So we say 2. But, I said to my wife, it's a boy. So we went to do ultrasound, but we couldn't see anything. <laughs> and I told my wife, it's a boy. So all the clothes that she's buying, boy clothes. <laughs> boy. But she said, let's, if any by chance, it's a girl, let's get some pink stuff. <laughs> Pass a bit. And can I tell you, my wife's first child, they said it was a breach, so she had to do a Caesar C-section. And when the child was born, I tell you the truth, I, I, I'm not that courageous, I couldn't go inside here. I tell you, Father Peter, I couldn't go inside. I didn't go inside at all. So, she had the baby. And guess what? It was a girl. And when I, when I went and asked my wife, my wife, what it is? She said, it's a boy. <laughs> we talk about boys so much that even though it was a girl, my wife said, it was a boy. <laughs> it was a girl. Listen. But the point is, I felt very proud yeah. when I took the little baby in my hand. Can I tell you, every one of us born into this world, we came as a miracle. It's a miracle. Can I talk to you? To carry someone in your womb for nine months or seven, suffer nauseation and all these things. It's not easy, ladies. That is why I told you, I respect the women. But well, every baby came into this world a miracle, sweet, adorable, innocent, and miraculous. But then we grow up and we messed up our lives. We made mistakes and carry a burden of sin and guilt. I said, guilt is not an easy thing to carry. You can't pray. You can't sing. You can't concentrate. Even though you pretend to be all right, you are not all right. You may dress up and put on expensive clothes, fancy hat, but deep down inside, you are not happy. You are hurting because sin and guilt was not made for us. Tonight, right now, you may be here and you feel like God has given up on you. You feel like you are beyond hope. And in your sober moments, when nobody is looking, you long for a fresh beginning. A second chance, yes, a new birth, yes, a spiritual miracle, yes, because we are spiritual beings yes, and we are not going to be happy until we are in harmony with the God of heaven. Yes. Am I talking to you tonight? Yes. I'm making it real. You may have grown up all your life in a Christian home. But now you are in the world living recklessly. You are rebelling against everything you have been taught. Your name may even be on the church books. 
But deep down in your heart, you know you have asked the devil pardon. And you are living not in harmony with God. God sees, he knows, he understands. And that's why I say to you, this campaign is not only to bring in others, it's to help us in the church to get right. Because Jesus is coming. What more can God do? He wants us to understand it's time to be sober because we are living on borrowed time. Hear the word of God tonight, my people, my people, my people. You are broken, your own standards, and in the process, broken. God's standards. Amen. And what is making you so sad is that you keep doing the same wrong thing over and over again. Perhaps you have done things you are ashamed of. Amen. In fact, you may have a dirty little secret that you keep bottled up in your life. You don't want to think about it. And you live in fear that someday, somehow, somebody will find out. Amen. But I'm here to tell you tonight, don't be afraid of somebody or some people. You have to be afraid and think about the God of heaven who knows everything. Though he's a merciful, long-suffering God, one of these days, mercy door will close. Hear the voice of Jesus tonight. My people, my people, hear the word of Jesus. Mm hmm Deep down inside, you are uncomfortable and afraid. Mm. Because we don't know when death will come knocking on our doors. And our going to church would have been in vain if we were playing church. But tonight, mercy is available. If you feel that way, you are not alone. I'd like to tell you briefly about four men and two women who messed up their lives. In fact, some of them turned their backs on God completely. I don't think anyone has done that tonight. And you couldn't blame God if he had given up on them. But thank God, he didn't. Amen. Say amen. amen. God didn't. Amen. You see, that's amazing love. Amen. That's what love is. Yes, love is not just talk. No. Talk is cheap. Yes, I told you, love finds its expression in action. Yes. If you love me, demonstrate it. You can't see you love God and you're letting the devil poking his dirty fist in the face of God because you are demonstrating that you love the devil more than God and God has to be still warding off the devil though you are giving the devil a foothold over him. He wants to kill you and God wants to save you. Oh, I wish tonight you could see the struggle that is taking place. But God is a loving God. Persons want to talk about and take my seat are Jacob, Peter, Saul, Jonah, Rahab, and Mary. Let's begin with Jacob. In Genesis, write it down. When you go home, you can read it. In Genesis chapters 25 
and 27, you will find the story of Esau and Jacob. Jacob deceived Esau and their father with the help of a compromising mother. I say we have to be careful, parents, how you relate to your children. Don't have any favorites. Treat them equally. Treat them fairly. Am I talking to the church tonight? So the Bible tells us, let me summarize. That Jacob, this is Esau. Mm -hmm. And this is a message for us. Church members and visitors, we have an inestimable value on our lives. We can't allow people to treat us as if we are commoners. We are precious. We have potential. We were made by God. He loves us. We have an inestimable value. So even though you may be going through your struggles, young people, keep your dignity and stay with God. Jacob deceived Esau. He became a thief, a liar. Now he was a runaway. Had to run away from whom? So Cole Brown is now his bed. And Rockstone was his pillow. He had a comfort of a home, the comfort of a church. But you allow the experiences of life to rob you of the luxury that you have. And I always say to my young people, be careful of those who come to you with their sweet nonsense and their fancy promises. Because a moment of ecstasy can become a lifetime of misery. It got darker outside and darker on the inside. He had fears within and fighting without. And as the sun dropped behind the horizon, no doubt he began to think. What? have I done? I have really messed up. My father is a wealthy man and here am I looking like a deadbeat. I said when we leave God, it doesn't matter how much makeup you put on. It doesn't matter how much money you spend buying Brazilian here. You can't be yourself without God. Because your true beauty does not lie on the outside. Your true beauty is who you are on the inside and your values and your dignity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said, just look at me. Will I ever see mama and dada again? Will I ever see my homeland again? What have I done? Well, you may have been reading this story for years, but this is the message. This is the message. Sin will take you farther than you want to go. As a sin will take you farther than you want to go. Sin always costs more than you are prepared to pay. It may seem alluring now. Things may be happening for you. When you walk on this, the street, 
Because God has laid his hand heavily on you. You look good. You're shapey. And when you walk, you allow men knees to go weak. And you feel that you have it all nailed down. You used to sing in the church. You used to be faithful. You used to come to Sabbath school. But now, when you walk on the road and people tell you how good you look, you turn your back on God. One little mistake. And you're out there. Now you feel shame to come back. You are crying all night. But you don't want to come back. Well, I say to you, my friend, Jesus is crying over you. He wants you to get up and come back to him. He wants you to do it before it is too late. Amen. He began to weep. Life has a way of helping us to understand that we can only go so far without Jesus. Second person we want to look at is Peter. And if you read the Bible from Mark chapter 14, from verse 66 to verse 72, you will understand who was Peter. Peter was a fisherman. Peter was an ignorant man. Peter, not talking about Polish Peter, who God has transformed. But this Peter in the Bible, ignorant man, he feared no one. He was brash and outspoken. He was intensely loyal to Jesus. <laughs> he was intensely loyal to Jesus. Though he was brash and outspoken. You see, Jesus takes us from where we are. He transforms us and makes us in who he wants us to be. That is the power of the gospel. That is the power of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Peter. Knew all the clouds that are sold in the store. And if you mess with him, he will tell you how much yard you need to get. <laughs> Put it mildly. Yes. Though he was loyal to Jesus, yet in a way, he became a tragic moral failure. When Jesus was arrested and put on trial, Jesus told him before, he said, I prayed for you for the devil wants to see you. And not only that, Jesus told him, he said, what are you? Before the cock crew three times, you are going to deny me. Peter said, oh, me? No, I am loyal to you. Don't you see that, Jesus? I, I am loyal to you. But when Jesus was arrested, and you know, let me read that text for you. Matthew, Mark, Luke. I want to show you who these people were. To show you what God has done and to let you know that God wants to do something for somebody tonight. Look at the persons that Jesus had around him. Luke 22, verse 35. I don't know if you know that this was in the text, in the Bible, but look at it. Probably you jump over it, but look at this. And he said unto them, if you have the Bible, you see it in, 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 in red letter. When I sent you without purse and scrip and shoes, lacking anything, 
lacking anything. They said nothing. That was where Jesus was with them. They lacked nothing. They didn't have to carry anything. But look at the next verse. Then said he unto them, But no, but no, he that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his script. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. Where did Peter get his word from that he used to put on Marcus' ears? Well, uh, look at the text. Look at the text. Verse 37. For I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors for the things concerning me have an end, they must be fulfilled. Verse 38. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. So in other words, these men, when Jesus is in their presence, they didn't need to do anything because Jesus was here to protect them. But he said, when you're going away, if you don't have any sword, get one. Amen. No. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am showing you the state of mind and the state that the people were in. So when they arrested and put Jesus on trial, here comes Peter. Bad man Peter. He was willing to pull his sword, cut out Malchus ears. But watch this. The same Jesus said to him, Peter, no, you see, you are going to depend on the skillfulness of your ability to defend. But no, 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 you will never be able to defend. Put up your sword. And he picked up Malchus ears and put it back on. In other words, my people, it is not within us to defend ourselves. God must take care of us. Peter denied Jesus. And when he denied Jesus and the people were hearing him, he started to curse bad word. So they can say, no man, a man cursing the using these expletives, they can't be identified with Jesus. The world knows who we are. And sometimes our words and our lifestyle are causing a lot of people to be outside. But we need to bring them in. So the Bible says, my friends, but Jesus, when he denied Jesus, Jesus didn't give up on Peter. Jesus restored Peter and set him free. He learned that God is a God of second chance. Aren't you happy? Yeah. Well, look at Saul. Saul in Acts chapter 9, his name was there for you to see. He was a bitter persecutor of God's people. He would search down the people, heard that crusade is going on on Grandstone. And he would come down here to see all those who are going to Grandstone. If believe me, I'll tell you something. If you knew that people were going to come here to kill you, coming to church, would you still come? Don't answer. Don't answer. Don't answer. But we must reach the place where we will stand up for God. Come what may. So Saul would search for God's people. And he would kill them for declaring Jesus. But one day on the road... To Damascus, he met Jesus. He came in contact with Jesus, and Jesus transformed his life. Jesus changed Saul to Paul. He converted, he was converted from a persecutor to a preacher. He 
gave him a second chance. Not only did Jesus convert Saul to believe in him, he used him as the apostle to the Gentiles. Paul wrote most of the New Testament books. The God of second chances gave him a life time opportunity yeah. then look now at the preacher here was this preacher man the prophet by the name of Jonah God's man with God's message Nini, the people of Nineveh was the people were wicked they were bad people they turned from God and you believe that the prophet would want the people to repent. <laughs> and God called Jonah and said, go down to Nineveh. Warn the people and if the people turn from their sins, I will save them. Just like what we have in Crusade now, God is calling for people to change their way. But, but Jonah said, no. These people too wicked. Leave them and let them die in their sins. I thank God that God is not like man. God is a merciful God. Here was a prophet who turned his back on God. And when he tried to flee from the presence of the Lord, he went down to Joppa and found a ship going down to Tarshish. And pay, underline the word, P-A-I-D. He paid the fear. He didn't have to pay no fear. Didn't have to spend anything. All he needed to do was to declare God's word. But he turned from God, went down to Joppa, found a ship going down to Tarshish, paid the fear. And went down into it. And found himself shortly thereafter down in the stomach of a wheel. But even then, God didn't give up on him. God allowed a big fish to swallow him. It's not everybody. Who tell you the truth? Hate you. You hear what I say? Yeah. It's not. I, I wanted to put it another way, but I don't want to cause anybody to feel bad. But I remember the story. There was winter, winter, and this bird was trying to escape the winter and going down. But the winter was there and terrified, and he passed a cow. And the cow stole on him. And when the, 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 the cow stole on him, he was there and the mess of the cow warm and start to melt the ice and he was there warm under the cow dung. And while he was there under the cow dung and getting warm and getting back to life, poke a little hole and start people and start to whistle. And while he was there whistle, here came a cat. And hear the whistle. When he heard, the cat heard the whistle, scratch it away. Found the little bird in there singing. Guess what the cat did? He ate the bird. So in other words, the moral is, it is not Everybody that's tall on you don't like you. <laughs> and the next lesson is when there's tall on you, keep your mouth shut. Because sometimes what they meant for evil, God meant for good. And God is a long time God. They may delay some things, but better days are coming.
coming. He that hath an ear, let, let him hear. Yes. Try to run away from God. The fish coming him down and gave, and God gave the will a sudden attack of indigestion. And the will brought him to shore, vomit him out. Now, it didn't matter. The slime and the grind. No, he was back on land. Listen to me. You may be messed up. You may be murky. But tonight I want to tell you there is still power in the blood of Jesus. For what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. They may have stolen you. They may have said all bad things about you. They may have written you off, but I'm here to tell you, Jesus loves you. And he says, stay the course, stay on line, keep the lane. God is going to come through on time. Amen. You know why? People don't know, appreciate what they have Amen. until they lose it. People will not, and you know, God has a way of giving you what you want so you can learn to appreciate what you didn't want. The story is not about Jonah and the wheel, it is about God. The God of second chances. Am I talking to the church tonight? I don't know if I can make it any plainer. Because the devil may have deceived you. But God wants to save you. Amen. Amen. Let's go down to Mary quickly. Bring it home. Mary Magdalene. Chapter 14 of Mark from verse 3 to 9. Here was this young girl in the church. Beautiful specimen of feminine femininity. <laughs> full of potential. Full of hope. Sang in the choir. Came up here to lead out in Sabbath school. Sabbath school superintendent. And the elders in the church couldn't keep their eyes off her. So one, by the name of Simon, deceived her, messed her up. She stopped coming to church. And now outside there, making shipwreck with her life, putting all manner of tattoos all over her body, going to all party, drinking, getting drunk. They brought the news to the church. And the same elder who knew what he did sat on the board and disfellowship her, remove her from membership. Wow. But God is no respecter of persons. But one day, I said one day, Mary came in contact with Jesus. I said when you come in contact with Jesus, you can never be the same again. And wherever Jesus goes, good things happen. So they were planning a feast for Jesus. And they did invite Mary. Because Mary was an outcast. But God is good enough. God is merciful. And though Jesus knew the beginning of the story, Jesus accepted the invitation. And he went. Because God was going to do something marvelous. But this Mary, Mary Magdalene, because of God's love and God's transformation, she says, amongst the monastery, my love for Jesus. So she saved up all her little money. 
she bought a very special expensive ointment because she was going to do something for Jesus she bought her all about the box and her perfume she brought it to the feast those times people sit down and table now that is not where it used to be they used to sit down um, down on the elbow like the feet behind them and so the table around there so they do that and they eat because those times people not so sophisticated they eat with their hand so she came behind Jesus burst her alabaster box started to anoint his feet and to use her tears to wash you see when you remember where you have been yeah. how people have written you off yeah. and say ain't gonna come to anything yeah. and know God steps in yeah. and transform your life yeah. give you a new start a fresh beginning when you talk about it tears come people don't understand but let them stay because you know what God has done for you she washed Feet and use her hair yeah. and dry. She was doing that for his burial. I tell you, Jesus said, I tell you that wherever the gospel is preached around the world, her act of kindness and love will always be preached as a memorial of her. What a God. Amen. He gives, let me put it where you can get it. He gives personal and individualized attention to every one of us. He knows our pain. He knows our hurt. He knows when you can't tell anybody anything because you may say he's your best friend and you can't tell your best friend and your best friend is going to keep it. But your best friend has a best friend and that best friend has another best friend. But little after that, your story is all over the place. But when you tell it to Jesus, he will hear, he will understand and he will transform your life. God did that for Mary. He gave her a second chance. But finally, let's go to Rahab. You know who Rahab? You know who Rahab really was? Joshua chapter 2. That's where we're closing tonight. Joshua chapter 2. You can't be too far that God cannot reach you. Listen to this, my friend. Bring home. First one. Let's read it. And Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an harlot's house. Name Rahab and lodge there. Lord have mercy. Watch this. And it was told the king of Jericho saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab saying, Bring forth the men. Because, in other words, she used to run a brothel. Or, put it mildly, what can I say? <laughs> she used to operate a house that provided services for the men for money okay. and women. So, when the strange men came, they felt that if there is nowhere else they could find them, they must find Rahab's house. 
Because Rahab has a reputation. Rahab had a reputation. That is where the men would go. For that's where all the pretty girls were. End quote. But well, watch this. And enter into thine house. For they become to search out all the country. So you can't save them. Turn them over. And the woman took the two men. Watch this. And hid them. And said thus. There came men unto me. But I wish not whence they were. In other words, many men come here. <laughs> and they come here, nuff, nuff. <laughs> I don't service all the men. Men come and men go. So they may have come here, but they are no longer here. Watch this man. And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate. Can't be this Jewish Don't let any enemy stay in your camp. And you shut them in. They'll be like the Trojan horse. And it's not everybody who hope you mean you well. And it came to pass the time of shutting of the gate. When it was dark. That the men went out. Whether the men went, I would not. Pursue after them quickly. For he shall overtake them. In other words, they just leave. They carry it far. <laughs> but she had brought them up to the roof of the house. And hid them with the stalks of flock which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them the way to Jordan unto the fords. And as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know, watch this, Lord have mercy. Hold on, if you don't get anything else, get this. Watch this. Who she was? A harlot. But listen to her word. You hear? Verse 9. I know that the Lord has given you the land and that your terror is falling upon us. And that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. God gives people the opportunity to know yes. what you do with the knowledge is up to you. But well, watch this. For we have heard, that's what the gospel is all about. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. When you came out of Egypt and what he did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side, Jordan, Shion and Og, whom he utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in the earth beneath. Hallelujah. Verse 12. Now therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness that he will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a, a true token. Verse 13, a closing. And that he will save alive my father 
and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. Salvation is a family thing. So you can't be in here and have your children out there. Father and mother and children must come. Rasta man have Rasta picnic. Catholic have Catholic picnic. Adventists must have Adventist children. Yes. Oh, you're quiet on me. Amen. Why are you so quiet? Amen. Don't be quiet. Because look at this. I'm going to bring it home. Look at verse 14. And the men answered her, Our lives for yours. If he utter not this, our business, don't tell anybody. And it shall be when the Lord hath given us the land mm -hmm. that he will deal kindly and truly with thee. Then she let them down by a cord through the window. For her house was upon the town wall and she dwelt upon the wall. But to quote the story and let's get down to it. The, the spies told Rahab. Rahab, remember Rahab was a harlot? Yes. Hmm? Lady of the night. He said, listen to me. Anybody that is going to be seen must be in your house. If they're not in your house, they're going to die. Bring your mother. Bring your father. Bring your sister. Bring your brother. Bring your uncle. Bring your niece. Bring everybody, let them stay in the house for as long as they're in the house, they will be saved. Amen. You know what? There were other places. There were churches there. But guess where salvation was? Lord of mercy. Salvation was in Rahab's house. If you want to be saved, you have to be in Rahab's house because Rahab demonstrated obedience to God. Amen. And God can transform you in a moment. There are some people need to hear many sermons for them to try be transformed. Only one you need and you cry out to God. He will hear you and forgive you and transform you and set you free. Time came, my friend. Read the rest of the story. They came, destroyed the land, and only those in Rahab's house were saved. God of second chances. You are nice people. You don't live like Rahab. You are not like any of those who I have mentioned. But even if you didn't do anything like those people, once you're born in this world, you are affected by sin. And the only way you're going to get out of here is if you surrender to Jesus. Amen. Tonight, while my organist comes and my singing evangelist comes, tonight, Jesus is calling you. You and you. I don't know who you are, but Jesus knows you. And while I was preaching, your heart was racing. Your heart racing or beating faster. It simply means that the spirit of the Lord is working with you and is bringing conviction to you and help you to understand it can't be business as usual. Do you hear what I'm saying? Next week's Sabbath is going to be a very special Sabbath. And God has your name written down. Would you give him a chance tonight? Here, you need to say to him tonight, I am here to tell you tonight, my brothers, that there is life after brokenness. There is life after failure. There is an avenue back to God. For the story tells us, my friend, in Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10, he says, no is the time of salvation. There is no repentance in the grave. 
In Ezekiel 18, 20 to 23, the Bible says the soul who sins is the one that will die. Your mama can't help you. Your papa can't help you. It's you and God alone. In Ezekiel 18, 27, he says, consider your ways. Consider your ways. For it's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof leads to death. And in considering these things, there are three steps that you must take. Step number one, Jacob did it. You need to meet Jesus. Genesis 32, 22 and 23. The Bible says, while he was running away, hiding from his brother Jacob, he met Jesus. Struggle. When the man wrestled with him, till they break. And in order to escape, the Bible says, he touched him on his lawns and he began to limp. You are meeting Jesus in the Mission of Mercy evangelistic campaign. Here you are tonight. God is calling to you. You have heard the message. You have listened to the call. The Spirit is working upon you. Then the next thing he did Chapter 32, verse 26, the first part, is that he listened to Jesus. Jesus is talking to you tonight through this sermon. He's talking to you. The next thing he did, not only listen to Jesus, he talked to Jesus. How can you talk to Jesus? You can talk to him in prayer tonight. You can say, Lord, I am a sinner. I have sinned. I have messed up my life. But tonight, I am fed up. Oh, yes. I am sick and tired. Yes. There must be something better yes. to my life. Yes. Lord, I need your help. Yes, Lord. I need it now. I need deliverance now. Yes. I have tried everything. And nothing seems to be happening. But tonight I believe that you will hear my prayer. Yes. God is willing to hear you, my friend. Pray to him. He will change your life. Single evangelist is going to sing. And listen to me. This is serious business. No joking business. The prayer warriors are praying. Those who love you are praying. But tonight, while the singing evangelist sings, I'm going to invite you. Just get up from where you are. You're not yet baptized. Not yet surrender. I am weak. I am and tonight, God wants to do something for you. Don't look at anybody. It's just you and Jesus. Shut out everybody else. And turn your life over to Jesus tonight. Who will be the first? Just get up from where you are. Come, Pastor, you win. Come and stand beside me. My Pastor, we can stand on this side for me. Come back home to Jesus tonight. We want to pray with you and for you. You are here, not yet baptized, but you want to surrender to Jesus. A boy, a girl, a man, a woman, an older man, an older woman. This is your moment. 
invite the church to stand. Stand with me. Is yours. Don't go back the same way you came. We want to pray with you. We want you to get the victory tonight. Will you walk from where you're standing? Will you come to the front? Who will be the first tonight? I know you're here. Come on. A girl, a boy, a man, a woman. Come on. You're standing beside a family member. And you know that it's a family thing. You got to bring them into the ark. This is the ark movement. This is God's church. He's preparing his people to go home. You got to hold that hand and walk with that person tonight. Come on. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Come on. I know you're here. I know you're struggling. But just give God a chance in your life tonight. He's a God of second chances. You want it? Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, I know you're here. Don't be stubborn. I know you're here and I know the Lord is speaking with you. Will you get up? Will you try the Lord tonight? Come on, come on, come on, come on. You're here tonight. You're here tonight. Come on, brother. for Jesus tonight. He's calling. He's beckoning. He says, come, 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 come. Who will be courageous enough to be willing to step out for Jesus tonight to say, Lord, I may have made mistakes. But tonight, I want to turn it over to you. We have two minutes to do it. Hear the voice of Jesus calling. Is there one for Jesus tonight? Is he speaking to you? Is he talking to you? How does it feel tonight? Are you willing to turn it over to him? Come on, young people. Is there one for the Lord tonight? He says, take my hand. Take my hand. He's calling you tonight. Would you come tonight? He's calling. Tonight is calling. Tonight is calling. Our heads are bowed and our eyes closed. Come on, sister. Come on, brother. Come on. Come on. Hear the voice of Jesus calling. Is there one we want to pray with you? And for you. Come on, sister. Come on. Come to him tonight. Come on. Don't believe me? Walk with me. Come on, don't be afraid. Hold my hand. Every step you take. Come on. Come on. Don't be afraid. Precious Come on. Say amen. Come on, don't be afraid. Go, go up to pass. Go up to pass. Hold on. Is there one more to pass? Come on.
Would you give him a chance tonight? Would you give him a chance tonight? We are closing with the call. Is there one more for the Lord? of the message. The human condition is exposed. Mm. We are vile and wretched, mm. sinful. Oh God, a savior has been declared. Yes. That no matter what situation we are in, you will still reach down your loving hand. Mm -hmm. and you will save us. Amen. Oh God, tonight there are folk here who have been so touched and damaged by sin, mm -hmm. shackled. Maybe some, oh God, are still in the pews. Mm. Satan has put chains on them. Mm -hmm. They want to move, but they can't move. But God, I believe that the power of the gospel can break those chains yes. and set them free. Mm. Oh God, we lift up holy hands in this sanctuary and we say to God, be the glory. Amen. 
Because the word did not return void tonight. No, it got into hearts. And there are people who walked up here declaring evidence that the gospel is still powerful. That Jesus still saves and keeps and satisfies. Mm. Oh God, I ask in the name of Jesus that those who have come up here tonight will settle it with you. Yes. So that next Sabbath they will be a part of those who will make public decisions and surrender their lives to Jesus in baptism. Yes. Let them know, oh God, that the world has nothing to offer but sin mm. and death. Mm -hmm. and sickness mm -hmm. and disease and infirmity. Let them know, oh God, that you have come that they might have life yes. and have it more abundantly. I ask in the name of Jesus tonight that you'll uphold the preacher. You will keep him. You will encourage him. Oh God, you will give him the power that he needs every night and day to declare this message. Let him know that he's not alone. Let him know that you are with him. Let him know, O oh God, that the work he is doing, he does it as a collaborative effort with the Holy Spirit. Yes. The Spirit of God is in this place and we declare that saints tonight have been made because yes. of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Sinners have been transformed into saints because of the gospel. And O oh God, as I end this intercession, as I pray this prayer, I remember what Paul says. In Colossians 3 and 16, mm -hmm. let the word of God dwell in you richly, yes. teaching and admonishing in psalm and hymns and spiritual songs. Oh God, this word tonight, I want this word to dwell in us richly, yes. that we will never forget it. I pray, oh God, that it will come to us in the form of a psalm. In the form of a song, yes. in the form of a hymn, mm -hmm. but we will never forget it. Yes. In the name of Jesus, I pray that this work tonight will dwell richly in our hearts. I want you to pray this prayer after me. This is our personal prayer. Every one of you, pray this prayer after me. My loving Father. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for salvation. I surrender my life to Jesus. I repent of my sins. I receive the forgiveness from Jesus. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Keep me faithful. Until I see Jesus, thank you, Father, for answering my prayer. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. The preacher has some mercy to you. God bless you. Love you. God bless you.